Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net, and I'm going to be mixing it up a little bit today. I'm taking a look at a uh, Blitz game played a little bit earlier this year in 2012 between two of my favorite YouTube chess personalities, and uh, with the white pieces in this game, we've got Trifon Gabriel, uh, play, uh, also known as King's Crusher, and with the black pieces, we got Jerry from the Chess Network. So both these guys, very established chess personalities on the internet, and uh, doing quite a bit of good for the promotion of the game. I would definitely recommend checking out their channels, everything like that. But let's take a look and see what these guys do You know, when they're in action, mixing it up on the board here. So King's Crusher is going to be opening with E4. And now uh, against uh, Chess Network's C5, he, he responds with Knight C3, so signaling uh, some type of Grand Prix attack or close Sicilian. And E6, very flexible reply. That seems to be the standard stuff against Knight C3. You can also see you know, a, lot, a lot of stuff. I mean, Knight C6, um, G6, you know, a variety of replies. But E6, very flexible. And with F4, okay, this, this is going to be a Grand Prix or, or a close Sicilian. A6, very flexible stuff, prepping a, a later B5. And knight F3, standard, standard stuff here. And so with G3, King's Crusher is going to be signaling. Now he's, he's playing a close Sicilian. And specifically, this type of close Sicilian was really employed with success by none other than former world champion Boris Spassky. This was kind of a pet system of his, I believe, in the 60s. And the idea is that, first of all, you start out a little more flexibly by playing uh, knight c3, f4, and knight f3 first. And now the knight on f3, the idea is that it's going to be a little more useful than if the knight had gone to e2 directly. So also against b5, we can see now this knight, in response to a future b4, is going to be able to go back to knight e2. So moving forward, just bishop g2, just you know, standard development, nothing crazy there. D3, uh, you know, not, nothing crazy again. And now d5. So this is a little dicey from, from the chess network here. So d5 definitely uh, dicing it up a little bit in the center, putting a little bit more pressure on white early on. You know, obviously it's also possible to play d6, knight to e7, and g6, even bishop to e7, queen, c7, b6. There's, there's a ton of options here. But d5, just go ahead and get to it. So I like the directness. And also this is a good response. You know, maybe if white had castle, d5 wouldn't be quite as good as white could respond with d4 here. Just an idea, trying to fix this d5 pawn as a permanent weakness. So a little bit different though with d3. All right. Push me forward, knight f6. And the knight on f6, you know, I, I kind of like the setup with the knight on e7 and, and g6, the fianchetto. But the knight on f6 after e5, it's almost like some kind of weird <laughs> French defense setup for black and that he's got a lot of pressure on the dark squares in the center. Maybe he's going to try to undermine uh, with f6 later. And so pushing forward, queen to e1. Pretty standard move. A lot of times you'll see g4, the queen coming out to g3 and whatnot. And the queen is also defending e5. And that's going to be important because now with King's Crusher's next move, f5, you know, this is good. This is good stuff for, for white. And, you know, it's going to get pretty complicated here. But with playing f5, you know, obviously black doesn't want to take it. This is going to allow knight takes d5 and e6, both of which are not going to be good for business for black. So you see this f5 idea very thematic push, and you also see this in some lines in French defense. And so knight to b4, all right, put some little pressure. The rook f2, common way of defending here, defending laterally. And so d4. So black is trying to punish this, this f5 move. You know, he, he's trying to get to the point here. And he's also taking advantage of the fact, you know, the knight on b4, it's a, it's a little bit uncomfortable defending the pawn here on the second rank because, you know, white would probably have liked to have played takes, and knight to e2, trying to get the knight to f4, hitting e6, you know, that would have been nice. The only problem is, knight takes c2, it just fails right away. Move fails. So, knight e4, and uh, king's crusher here, preferring to sack the pawn to go for activity. So he gets this check in here, and so now, you know, the position is quite interesting. Honestly, I prefer black. I, I think uh, the extra pawn is is good stuff here, and, and also d6 is probably going to drop. Black could be up two pawns, but 
White does have, uh, you know, he, he's got a little bit of not so much a leading development, just that Black's rooks are really, you know, it's very tough to get them in the game. So Bishop G5, trying to provoke a, a weakness here, F6. You know, it seems seems to be reasonably forced, F6. You, you definitely don't want to let that bishop uh, go, go into E7 here. Knight F6 was also possible. And I think this is a move, you know, I, I would definitely consider. Knight F6 followed by H6. You know, it seems reasonable, but, you know, you do got to watch F5. You know, we could say knight h4, and all of a sudden, black's position not so comfortable. So I, I think f6 is probably the right choice. And so knight d5, so trying to get back and defend here. Also possible, maybe just a straightforward king f7. You know, I, I definitely like this idea. And if he, if he goes after f5, I you know, I wouldn't want to give it to him. Maybe we could exchange, and then g6. And just try to hold that extra pawn, try to pick up, try to scoop up the d6 pawn later. So anyway, um, you know, to Jerry from the chess network here going with knight d5. And he, he's just trying to regroup, maybe get that knight in there. But the problem with this knight d5, so first, king's crusher goes back, bishop d2. And so now knight h4, and the problem with the knight on d5 is it's pinned. And this is a pretty uncomfortable pin. And, and so now, you know, queen to e8... I wasn't so crazy about this move here. I, I just think the direct king f7 was the best way to go. Now, I mean, it, you know, white can try to go crazy here and, and try to rip the position open. Maybe knight g5. Maybe this is what he was scared of. Rook takes with check. And because of the pin, he can't come back. But it still seems like knight takes knight, knight to f6. And all of a sudden, black's got a good coordination. He's going to scoop this pawn, and, and it looks like you know he should be okay. So I, I think, again, you know, directly king f7, try to get this rook out, get the king out of there, just just get out of there with, with the king, you know, get your pieces set up. But queen to e8, it does make sense, as maybe he's trying to control the e3 square. White plays knight, knight to h4, so now knight e3 is not even possible. And this is, I, I didn't really like this, this concept uh, of the, the chess network with black here. Trading queens, I, I just don't understand why. You know, it, it seems to me g6 here. Just just hold the extra pawn. I mean, g4, it doesn't really seem to get it done. Just take it. You got a lot of pieces defending this. Seems like black is okay. But here he trades. So this is something I've covered a little bit in, in a few articles on my site, initiating the exchange. And this is a great example of why you want to avoid initiating the exchange. Because by trading queens... White is essentially getting a free developing move, bringing his rook to e1, you know, an open file there. So I, I, I think, uh, you know, he wants to play knight e3, but it just doesn't work with this pin. Very uncomfortable stuff. So I, I think initiating the exchange here, and we can see, so black goes from being up a pawn, and he was probably going to win d6 later. Now he's sacking the pawn black, sacking the pawn back, and he's still got to deal with this uncomfortable pin. White's piece is really becoming active. So... White goes with rook e7 here. Interesting idea. Trying to, uh, I guess he just, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I this is a blitz game. I, I'm not trying to criticize these guys too much. I mean, the quality of play was definitely pretty high. Rook e7 was pretty complicated stuff. Uh, I, I think maybe just taking and knight takes here. If g6, then knight to e7. And I think this pin, this is starting to come apart. A little bit. This is getting a little bit sketchy for for black in this position. So anyway, instead, rookie seven, and after a few exchanges, white picks up the pawn with check, and so now black actually is going to sack another pawn here. But white, instead of taking the pawn, you know, we see a good move. You always want to look for a better one. Plays knight to d6, and now it looks like black is going to be losing a piece. So here, you know, king c7. He, he's got to avoid the check. You know, that's, that's not going to be good. You know, you got to avoid the check. And so now after knight takes, you know, this the pin, it finally worked, finally prevailed for white here. So now knight e3, and now the position becomes very interesting. So he takes, and so rook to e8. So counting the material, black has one pawn for the piece. But the old pawn on e3 is not, it's not that easy. The knight also is, is really kind of tough to get in, you know, it's tough to get it in a good spot here. 
And so Black actually was able to achieve some pretty nice counterplay. And this is really what I, I want to look at in this game, what I, what I found most interesting. So d4, so just trying to break out. Now c4, and the thing is, black, you know, white's got to be a little careful here because he's he's only got one extra pawn, and it's very difficult for him to get get this pawn out of here. You know, it's, it's very difficult to, to activate his king, active, you know, get, get activity, period. But I think in this position, I think trading pieces would have really helped him out. I think knight c5, go ahead and put the knight where it's active, even if you trade, this pawn is okay. You know, it's it's not it's not going to drop. C6, the bishop's going to hold the pawn. And now, I think just the, the plan for white to try to win, if he can get his rook to D1, that's going to be the plan. He, you know, open D file, get some counterplay. But what happened in the game, now here he goes knight to C1 instead of knight to C5. And so the knight on C1, I understand what he's trying to do. He's trying to, he's trying to be very solid, he's trying to just creep over black. And he was probably very low on time here. And what this allows, though, is his knight really just is out of the game. And so now with h3, h3, I, I guess he wanted to keep the knight, you know, from coming to d3. That, that would have definitely been good for black. Then after h3, I think the best move for black would have been knight h5. Now you hit this pawn here. If g4, just simply knight to f4. Um, or you can take it either way. Let's just say takes now knight f4 and it seems like black really might have a, a serious game here. You know, he's got one pawn for the piece, but look at the pawn if white goes back knight to d3 and It looks like black is doing okay, you know mir miraculously. I, I think black maybe is gonna be able to hold it so anyway, I, I think the knight to h5 idea and if he goes king, king eight, h2, probably just f4. Same stuff. Um, now it's it's probably even stronger as the king is just that that much farther away from the e-pawn. So anyway, going back here, instead, Mr. Chestnut, where he plays h5. And this was an interesting idea because he's trying to just surround this pawn on e3 so to make it unapproachable for white's king to try to win the pawn. And so now with g4, this is the idea. You know, I, I would have preferred the pass pawns. The, the connected passers, you know, they're they're a pretty strong bet here. But I, I can understand what he, you know, he was scared that White was going to be able to blockade this, everything like that. And, you know, this is legitimate, although I think this would really help Black. I mean, now Black can get his rook active on the g file. Maybe he can maneuver the knight to hit the bishop on g5. Um, you know, I, I, this looks good for me. For, for black, I mean, it looks it looks solid, but g4 is interesting. Why well, I didn't like g4 is now we see the knight can no longer attack g3. There's no way to support this pawn on e3 with a pawn on f4, and it just kind of closes the position. But you know, on the other hand, it is closed. Maybe this makes it a little more drawish. Continue with knight d5, allowing this trade and white hops on it. But the trade, you know, now it's you now black can come in here and, and infiltrate. White doesn't have that huge bishop. And while black only has one pawn for the knight on c1, it's going to be pretty tough to get that knight in the game. So here, you know, especially with the king on e4, I, I didn't like this as well. I, I think in this position, white played b4, I think taking. Now, I, it's a tough decision because black is probably going to take with the king. But I, I don't know. You just... In this kind of game, I feel like you just need to defend, get this king over here. Now the knight to e2, knight to f4, and you know white white should be okay to win here. But instead with b4, I didn't like closing the position so much, especially as a b4 square. Maybe maybe it could have been a good place to put the knight. So anyway, b4, king g2. He's got got to stop the uh, infiltration here. And now black opens up another front as he's got his king really tying down the knight, the king. You know, it's it's not good. So here, knight a2. This is a move you don't want to make, but white's got to get the extra piece out now. I mean, if he goes rook here, maybe takes. And now with a king coming in, it seems like black. But I don't know. I mean, this, this doesn't really work. I mean, it, it seems like maybe not. King here. And the idea for white is just to run. 
if check, no problem. White's going to be okay. And also if king d2, trying to force it in, knight c1. Takes, king here, and white's just going to queen. So a lot of interesting stuff in this game. You know, the extra piece, the knight is very clumsy here. So knight a2 allows the white king in. And, you know, black is getting some some dangerous play. He goes king to e4 here. I thought this was interesting. I mean, maybe maybe take the pawn, right? I mean, it seems like just, just snatch the pawn. You're going to win this one too if check. No big deal. And, you know, now black has two pawns for the piece. Anyway, going back here, king to e4, now d5. So white, he, he hits upon a plan for some counterplay. f4. Black is trying to bust it open. He pushes f4 to get some more, you know, some more threats. d6, and now rook b3. I think the move for white here was maybe rook e2, although that does allow rook b1, and the, the rook does switch over, it seems. But maybe knight c2, rook d1, knight d4, and it seems like there's no way to stop the pawn. Although maybe you can try. This is probably what I would have gone for. After rook b3, I, I think rook e2 stopped the rook from getting in and, and pushing white's queen, white, white's king off the second rank. White goes d7, and this allows the rook to pick up that pawn. And so in this position, yeah, this is some shady stuff. Black has still only got one pawn for the piece, but he's picking up more. You know, now he's got two pawns for the piece on different sides of the board. That's very important as the knight isn't going to be able to cover both sides of the board. And so now knight g2. In this position, I think black should be able to hold a draw. Black is the one that's trying to win, actually. I mean, black has all the winning chances here, no doubt. So pushing forward, you know, white trying to defend. you got to defend actively. I mean, I think rook e3 would have been okay here. You know, defend the pawn, but he tries to be more active with uh, getting the rook behind the pawns. And it makes sense. You know, it, it definitely makes sense. Also, I think this was a little sneaky. I think it takes this check. But I, I don't know. The, the idea is that if king f4, you know, this this fork, you win the rook. And maybe just king back, and, and I think black is okay with the extra pawn. So, okay, so rook e8. Black doesn't take it. Repeat some moves. I think they were very low on time here. And in this position, black goes to trade. So I, I think black here, you know, just take the pawn and, and win. But he goes for the trade here. And so now black is still the only one trying to win. You know, he's got two pawns. And he's got, you know, now he's about to pick up. Now, he, now he's got pass pawns here. And in this position, black is either winning I think here, by the way, he should have played king d2. They were very long time. The end game is still instructive. I think king d2, now there's no check with knight f4, and black should be winning here, pushing these pawns. They're just too fast. Instead, king d3 allows the check. Now king d2, black loses a move. So every move is crucial in these end games. So c3, go ahead and start pushing the pawns. c2. And so now, you know, there's some interesting end game stuff where the knight... You know, let's say white's king is way over here. This one knight can actually hold black's king and pawn. The knight just just jumps around, and there's always, you know, some nasty checks, as we're going to see. So knight c3, and we can see the knight, you know, just, just able to jump in there and cover the cover the queening square. In this position, I think uh, black, he just, he made a mouse slip. He played king d1. If c1 queen... This is a dead draw. Both pawns get there on time, and uh, a complete draw. So what a what a nutty game. That's what should have happened. It said just you know some of those mouse slips and blitz games online, and it cost black uh, cost him the half point here as white went on to queen. I think it went something like this, and white just you know he's gonna just get the queen in here, march it in, and then march the king over and pick up that pawn. So anyway, that was uh, it was a pretty cool game. You know, the openings, we started out with a close Sicilian with the knight f3 line. 
And, uh, you know, Black quickly took advantage of D3, I think was a little bit too slow. I think castling early is maybe a little more active. D3, more of a normal move, and D5, a good way to take advantage of it. And from then, you know, Black really got excellent play in the center. Knight B4 and, and D4 was an excellent way of responding to F5. And in this position, you know, I, I just think Black is, I don't want to say Black is winning. I mean, he's up a pawn, but the pawn on D6 is very weak. So I think here the lesson to learn is just King F7, maybe G6 if you got to defend the pawn, get this rook over, and later try to snatch the pawn on D6. Because instead, Knight D5, and that allowed this, this pin. That's what really uh, cost Black... A lot of, you know, it, it caused him a lot of trouble, that pin there. And now, too eager to trade pieces. When you're defending, you, you do want to trade. But I think this was just too eager to trade. And it cost, you know, initiating the exchange. Now, rookie eight cost Black a lot of time. And, and the rest of the end game was, was definitely pretty interesting. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I uh, definitely, again, would like to encourage you to check out... King's Crusher and Chess Network on YouTube. They got some fantastic stuff going on there. This is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net. Thanks for tuning in.